The plot thickens within the royal narrative, as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's jaunt to Jamaica stirs the pot across the pond, does it not? In a move that caught many by surprise, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, also known as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, decided to pay an unexpected visit to the vibrant island of Jamaica. This visit was not just another notch on their belt of travels, but a significant event that sparked intrigue and curiosity worldwide. The couple's interactions with the Jamaican Prime Minister were notably different from previous royal engagements on the island. Warm and congenial, their meeting seemed to be more of a friendly chat than a stiff, diplomatic exchange. This unique approach to diplomacy, so different from the traditional royal stance, is what sets the Sussexes apart. Their ability to connect on a personal level, to break down the barriers of protocol and formality, is truly refreshing. In the lush landscapes of Jamaica, the Sussexes made their presence felt, an appearance that sent ripples through the royal establishment and the media alike. Yet, from the heart of the palace to the corridors of Fleet Street, the visit has been met with a mixture of astonishment and dismay. As the Sussexes' Jamaican jaunt unfurls, it garners a medley of responses from the palace and the British media alike. The royal establishment, with its labyrinth of tradition and protocol, seems taken aback, as the Sussexes' actions are perceived not just as a break from convention, but as a breach of unspoken royal rules. The media, ever the vigilant watchdog, echoes this sentiment, with headlines brimming with accusations of insensitivity and diplomatic faux pas. The Sussexes' seemingly impromptu visit, their warm interactions with the Jamaican Prime Minister, are portrayed not as a sign of grace and diplomacy, but as an affront to the delicate fabric of royal relations. Indeed, it appears that the narrative spun by the palace and the press is one of disregard, suggesting that the Sussexes, in their quest for independence and authenticity, remain oblivious to the intricate dance of diplomacy and familial dynamics that underpin the royal existence. Yet, beneath the surface of these reactions, there lies an undercurrent of something else, a sense of unease, perhaps, at the sight of a royal couple that refuses to be fettered by tradition, that chooses to chart their own course. A couple that, despite their perceived transgressions, continue to resonate with the masses in a way that is both compelling and thought-provoking. The narrative spun by the palace and the press seems to imply a disregard for the delicate fabric of royal relations. But, as we will see, the reality may be far more complex, and far more interesting. However, the reception of the Sussexes in Jamaica tells a different tale, one of admiration and genuine warmth. As the Duke and Duchess set foot on Jamaican soil, they were met with enthusiastic smiles and open arms, a welcome that was as warm as the Caribbean sun itself. Their interactions with the Jamaican Prime Minister and the local populace were filled with laughter and shared stories, painting a picture of genuine connection and mutual respect. The Sussex's ability to engage with the people of the Commonwealth, to resonate with their hopes and dreams, and to make them feel seen and heard, was on full display. It was a stark reminder of the couple's unique charm, their capacity to reach out and touch people's hearts, irrespective of their royal status or the controversies that surround them. Even as they tread a path away from the palace, the Sussexes continue to embody a modern representation of the Commonwealth, one that is inclusive, relatable, and forward-thinking. Their actions and interactions, their words and deeds, all speak volumes of their commitment to the people they once served as royals. Their ability to engage and resonate with the people of the Commonwealth speaks of a missed opportunity, a path not taken that could have redefined the very essence of the royal relationship with the Commonwealth. The Sussex's Jamaican sojourn, thus, serves as a poignant reminder of what could have been, and perhaps, what still could be. As the palace grapples with this unexpected chapter, the narrative of the Sussexes continues to evolve, unfettered by the traditional constraints of royal life. Their journey, a tale of autonomy and personal endeavors, paints a stark contrast against the meticulously crafted image of the monarchy. It's a narrative that's compelling, refreshing, and, to some, perhaps a little unnerving. The implications of their visit to Jamaica, and the warm reception they received, speaks volumes about the potential future of the monarchy. Could this be a glimpse into a more modern, more relatable representation of the Commonwealth? Could the Sussexes, in their pursuit of independence, be inadvertently paving the way for a new era of royal engagement? Their actions, their choices, 
and the reactions they provoke, are a testament to the evolving relationship between the monarchy and the world it seeks to connect with. Indeed, as the Sussexes bask in the Jamaican sun, the shadow they cast reaches far, touching upon the delicate balance of tradition and change, perception and reality, within the storied walls of the palace and beyond. Stay tuned for the next Majesty Moments video, King Charles and Prince William's drastically different approaches. Did you know that channel members can get an exclusive video every week? That's on top of custom emojis, loyalty badges, and an extra quiz question every day. Sign up link is in this video's description.